if you want to learn how to make a zombie, like, right here, then remember to watch till the end of the video. We'll use the pathfinding service, which is used to find paths between two points. Paths have waypoints to let us navigate between the AI and the target. First, you'll need a rig for the zombie. Um, if you're not familiar with rigging or animating, then I suggest you just use the rig I have pre-made in the description and just place into your workspace. Once you have your rig, create a script inside of it. And I'll call it Pathfinding. Like I do with all my scripts, I'm going to create a template which will tell me where things are supposed to go. So I'll do services, variables, functions, connections, and initialization. I like to note that these aren't necessary, but it's just easier to navigate your script like this. First, I'll define my services. I need the player's service. Um, doing this. The run service. And the pathfinding service, which is going to be used for the bulk of this script. Now, I'm just going to find a couple of the essential body parts I'll be using. So, the character itself, which is the script's parent, since the script is inside of the zombie. Next, the humanoid, which we'll use to move to points, and in the future, damage things. So... Just get that directly. And the, the root part, which will be used in pathfinding as well. Next, just a couple of settings. Whether or not we want to jump, I'll set that to true. So it can find things easier. It's attack range, which is going to be a vector 3 and it's field of view which I'll set to 70 next we need to get the character's size by using the get extent size function which basically finds the size of our model and all of its parts so I'll create a new variable called path params which is going to give the pathfinding service a little bit of data that's going to make it so the AI doesn't bump into things, it thinks to a certain size, even though it's not. So, agent radius. So, I get the radius of the model, which is kind of hard because it's a rectangle or square and not a circle. So I'll just get an average radius by doing here dot x plus oh no, no no character size dot x plus character size dot z and let's put these in parentheses and divide by four. Next thing we need to know is the agent's height. It's pretty easy. Character size dot y and whether or not it can jump. So agent can jump just be equal to can jump. Next we need to find the closest target. So I'm going to create a function that does that. Called get nearest player. And first we need a list of players that are in within the range, but then we need to find um the, the nearest one so nearest distance could be math.huge which is in Roblox just infinity and the actual target themselves which we haven't gotten yet so I'll set that to nil so then we want to get well loop through a list of 
all players by using the get players function. And next, we want to know if they have a character. So player dot character. If character is equal to nil, so they don't have a character, then we're gonna continue to the next player and just skip this one. Then we want to see whether or not um, they're within range. So distance equals character dot humanoid root part dot position minus character with um then I'm around root part dot position and what if distance is less than or equal to field of view so that would mean they're within range then you also want to make sure that we're getting distance dot magnitude because otherwise this is a vector three and we'd be comparing it with a number and magnitude basically just measures the length of a vector essentially so it'll basically measure the distance between the this player's humanoid root part and the AI's humanoid root part then we want to insert something to the players table which will give us a little bit of information distance equals dis you know we'll do magnitude instead magnitude equals distance dot magnitude and player just is equal to player and then so we could sort everything out I'll do a loop through the players table so for underscore entry in pairs players do um, local distance you know I'll do local magnitude equals entry dot magnitude and player equals entry dot player so now we want to know if it's closer than the last one so if magnitude is less than the nearest one which means it's even closer than the last instance then the nearest will equal to this magnitude and the target will be this player then we just return the target next we'll connect a function that will play every frame so run service dot heartbeat connect function and heartbeat is an event that plays every single frame or somewhere close to that I believe it's actually uh, renders every time a frame has been rendered not exactly when it happens but after it's been rendered which means we'll be able to find the target almost every frame so first thing we want is the player so local player equals get nearest player and we could do um, local player character equals player dot character if player character is equal to nil then return because we won't be able to find it and we'll get character humanoid which is going to be player character dot humanoid if character humanoid dot health is less than or equal to zero which would mean that they're dead so we don't really want to follow them do we because they're already dead so we'll just skip them too so now we can actually get to pathfinding so first thing I want to do is get the humanoid root part of um, the new player so we'll do um, player character dot humanoid root part then we want to get the destination the destination is just the point we're trying to reach with our pathfinding so target root part dot position and the beginning 
which is our, the AI's, human root part position. So now we can create a path using the pathfinding service by calling the create path function. And these path details we will insert here. These path params. And then we want to compute the path, which in this function takes the beginning and the end. And this is what computes the waypoints so we can navigate to the player. Now we do if path dot status is equal to enum dot path status dot success, then the path has been successfully computed. Otherwise, we're going to stop the the player comp the the AI completely by doing cumulative move to root part dot position. So this brings along this move to function which um, basically just makes the um, AI walk to that certain vector 3 spot. It's pretty simple to understand. Then we'll load our waypoints by calling the path get waypoints function and now it's time to loop through them. So for Oh, spelled that wrong. Waypoints, not waypoint. So for underscore waypoint in pairs, waypoints do if waypoint dot action is equal to enum dot path waypoint action dot jump, then we want the AI to jump. And a waypoint action is basically would it require the AI to jump to get to this position, or can they just walk there? So if it is a waypoint that requires them to jump, then we're going to do cumulate.jump equals true. Um, and that's how we make the AI jump. It's kind of a weird way of doing it, because usually something like this would be a function, but the humanoid is a little bit weird. So then we could do humanoid move to waypoint.position, which will just be the next waypoint. And then humanoid dot move to finished. Wait, in this bit, the move to finished event is fired every time this move to has been completed. And wait, and s now I know a lot of people are used to events being connected to, but they can also be waited for with this wait function, and that would work with any old event. Then for initialization, all we have to do is root part set network owner to nil. Now a network owner is um pretty simple concept to understand. So the client think about it like this. So the network owner is a player, and when something is unanchored, like our humanoid root part, so it can move, a client can take control of it and start moving around. So if we set to nil, then the client can't do anything to it, and the zombie will just, in short, move more smoothly. So now I'm just going to go and test the AI. And if there's any errors, we can, of course, go back and fix them, because that's just part of the development process that we all have to manage. So I'm going to play test and see if it moves to the correct position. As you can see, it is moving. However, we are finding a couple errors here. So we should go and fix those. So player character. Ah. So we don't know if the character is here or not yet. So instead, it's probably best to know that there is a player to begin with. So if if player is equal to nil, then return and now do player character equals player dot character or player dot character added weight and that should 
completely fix that error. It still works without it, but it's just nice to have a clean output because it makes it so much easier to debug when things like that are gone. So as you can see, the zombie is in fact following us very smoothly and it completely works. In the next part of this tutorial, I'll be teaching you how to actually make the zombie damage and attack people, but since um, the actual following process is so long, I figured I'd split the video into two parts. Anyways, if you enjoyed it or you learned something, remember to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.